Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, wiresportsbetting.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News, on iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Same for the Roku Vanity Code. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, recently, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver who's rapidly turning into, in my opinion, uh, the best commissioner in professional sports. He talked about how we needed to uh, have sports leagues actually acknowledge sports betting. Lord knows it's out there. Lord knows billions of dollars are bet on sports. Lord knows it's a big part of the popularity of sports. Right? You have countless internet casino websites, you have countless sports books. You know, from time to time you'll hear me say, well, Vegas views this match this way. You know, to be blunt, there are huge casinos on both sides of the Atlantic. There are huge casinos on both sides of the Pacific. Right? It's a fiction to believe that gambling is a minor player in sports. It's a major player. It's a major driver, right? Every Monday, one of the questions many of the people watching this video ask themselves are, what are the opening lines on NFL games? Now, in boxing, it's time the sport gets more real. After all, where do these fights take place? Many of them take place in casinos. Why are casinos paying huge site fees? It's because they understand they're going to generate a lot of revenue from gamblers. Right? Keep in mind, other sports whisper about sports betting. In boxing, you're watching an event, and the first words you'll hear from a Michael Buffer or a Jimmy Lennon Jr. is live from the MGM Grand Casino. Right? Or live from Mandalay Bay Casino. Right? Those are the things that matter a great deal in the sport. Right? These casinos, these, you know, whether it's in Vegas or whether it's in Connecticut, Foxwoods, etc., these casinos funding the sport. And it's not the casinos funding the sport. Let's get real here. It's the gamblers who are the customers of the casinos. We talk about betting odds here. We talk about over-unders. We talk about plus 500, minus 300. A fight can be a great fight, but might not be a betting opportunity. Now understand, in boxing more than other sports, the referee has an inordinate amount of power. Inordinate. Right? In baseball, unless it rains, the ball game's going to go nine innings. Right? The umps can't decide, hey, this pitcher is not on his game. The batters are having their way. I'm going to stop the ball game in the third inning. Right? This fight is over, or this ball game is over, right? In basketball, you know, a ref can't look at the teams and say, man, the Knicks really stink tonight. Wow, they have absolutely no shot of beating the San Antonio Spurs. You know, he's not going to look at the bench and say, man, Popovich is completely out coaching Derek Fisher. Wow. How many years do I have to see Duncan, Ginobili, Parker to realize this is an elite outfit? The Knicks have no chance. I'm going to I'm going to stop the event here. Right? That's not the way it goes in those sports. Right? Football, they don't pull the plug a quarter and a half into the game thinking, "Wow, you know, Tampa Bay doesn't have a shot against Seattle. I'm going to save Lovey Smith the embarrassment." of two and a half more quarters. That's not the way it works. That happens all the time in boxing, doesn't it? Right? We give the referee the power 
to pull the plug. Understand too, in other sports, you can go to a replay. Let's say you have the worst umpiring crew in history. Right? You're watching a game and the guy at first is clearly out and the ref goes like this, right? The ump says safe. It's a Don Denkinger type situation. And you're thinking, man, you know, then you're watching the game and, um, you know, guys are trapping fly balls and they're calling the guy out. Guys are getting caught stealing and they're calling them safe. You know what? In those sports now, you can go to instant replay, right? If you're a manager, you can say, hey, this this first base up is terrible. When he makes another bad call, you can, you know, come out, protest, get a replay, right? The leagues from their league office, you see this in the NFL all the time, can say, did that guy really score? We're going to review all touchdown plays, right? The league office. But because of the nature of boxing, you can't do that in boxing, can you? Right? Because you can't unring a left hook. You know, some guy throws a punch after the bell. That punch might knock out his opponent. If the guy's on the canvas, you can't say, hey, wake up. The replay shows that you were hit with the late punch. Uh, I need for you to get back to your stool and to get ready for the next round. That's not the way it goes, right? The ref in boxing has to be on his game in real time right he has more discretion than he would in almost any other sport he can end the event early right there's really no chance of replay on most things right because guys are getting knocked unconscious right these fouls you know a rabbit foul could literally disable the opponent from continuing on in the match. We can't say, was that a rabbit punch? Then go, oh, it was. Hey, just clean up the back of your head and come out for the next round. That's not the way it goes. So given the power that boxing referees have, we need to hold them to a higher level of scrutiny, especially since the actions of a boxing ref can impact the outcome of an event on which a lot of money has been gambled. Right? My agenda here is quite selfish. I just want honest events. I don't want refs with too much power doing things that they think is right, that by the rules aren't, right? That impact the outcome of events. So, the reason why I'm bringing this up is there's a boxing commentator out there. He happens to be one of the sport's best trainers. He's had multiple champions, right? Fighters who are elite fighters, they really compete with each other for the Sky Services. But this guy is a guy who also likes being in the booth, right? He's a boxing renaissance man. He's not just in the corner, but he's in the booth, so he picks his spots. And that's Teddy Atlas, who himself used to be a fighter if you look at his history, right? Now, Teddy Atlas has been critiquing refs during fights, just like all of us critique boxers, right? Isn't that what the sport's about? Why'd you say, man, you know, Mayweather didn't have a great fight. You know, what, what was... Andre Ward trying to accomplish in that round, right? Janady Golovkin, as I like to say, not really defensively blessed, right? We rip boxers, even a guy with a good performance. You'll say, wow, Vladimir Klitschko carried that guy for a few rounds before getting the knockout, didn't he? Right? That's what boxing news is all about, right? Analyzing the fighters. We even analyzed the judges. Now, many of you have privately contacted me about a fight. I believe it involved Tyson Cave. Many of you believe this was a travesty in terms of the scoring of the fight. I haven't looked at the fight yet. I promise you I'll try to track down that video. What, right? I myself here online have 
looked at fights and said, what were those judges thinking? Right, some of these decisions are head scratchers. Right, uh, I had Mauricio Herrera this weekend. There's a controversy over the scoring in that fight. Right, people can't understand the margin of victory. HBO had Herrera winning by four rounds. Unfortunately, the casino didn't have him winning, and that's what matters to me. Right, so we critique judges. Right, haven't the judges in the first Timothy Bradley Manny Pacquiao fight been discussed, analyzed? Haven't we looked at the scorecards? Haven't we argued over the rounds and who won what round in that fight? Now, given the level of scrutiny that we hold the fighters to and that we hold the judges to, what's wrong with Teddy Atlas and us, the boxing public, openly critiquing and criticizing and challenging these boxing referees? They should be challenged. But yet... But yet, the culture is so preposterous, some of these referees are so full of themselves that apparently a group of referees got together the other day and they challenged Teddy Atlas to talk to them about his concerns about their performance face to face. Right? There was actually an article on BoxingScene.com, right? These refs were tired of being criticized. You know what? Count me among those who support Teddy Atlas and people who hold a fire to these referees. Right? Because understand, a ref can really sink an event. I remember I was watching a fight a couple years back. Abner Maris against Joseph Agbeko. I had to start looking away from the TV. Abner Maris threw so many low blows. And guys, I know... There are many of you who will understand this next sentence, right? Abner Maris threw so many low blows that I myself started feeling discomfort. I myself found myself, you know, covering up. I could just imagine the pain Joseph Agbeko was going through. Now, the referee that night, Russell Moore, is a pretty good ref. Like many of us, some days for him are better than others. He had a bad night. Right? The fight was outrageous. As you were watching the fight, you thought, wow, when is this ref going to disqualify Abner Maris? Right? Even Andrew Galata would have been embarrassed by the performance below the belt that Abner Maris threw down that night. Right? In my opinion, Russell Moore was as much a story that night as were the two fighters. Right? Fans who actually paid money to see a legitimate fight within the rules, I'm sure were a bit astonished. So, let's just say, if a boxing commentator like Teddy Atlas... And keep in mind, Atlas is paid to give us his opinion. He's paid to critique the event, to comment on what's happening. And certainly judges are part of the event, the fighters are part of the event, and yes, the referee is part of the event. If refs are upset at being criticized, you need to understand that's the price for admission. If you're going to be refereeing public, professional boxing matches, expect to be critiqued. Let me say this. Let me give you a few historical examples where we haven't looked closely enough at the referee. I encourage everyone, and it's one of the biggest fights ever. I encourage everyone to revisit the Rumble in the Jungle. Right? Ali knocks down George Foreman. Right? Does Foreman beat the count? Now, don't get me wrong. I, I thought Foreman was tired. He's in bad shape. Back then, the fights were 15 rounds. Right? 
I believe Ali won several of the rounds up to the knockout. Right? But just ask yourself, did Foreman beat the camp? Take a look at the ending of that fight. Understand it's important too because you have bets that are round specific. Right? You know, these days, maybe not in 74, but these days, guys are picking not only the prop, you know, not only the method of victory, the KO, they're picking rounds. It makes a difference. Whether Foreman's KO'd in the seventh round, the eighth round, the ninth round, right? Did Foreman beat the count? How come historically we really haven't talked about the ref's performance that night? By the way, what I want people to do is to research Foreman a little bit more. Foreman these days has a very smooth, corporate-friendly persona. He didn't in the 1970s. Understand there have been times where Foreman has made statements that imply that he feels that fight wasn't on the up and up. Right? Where he has criticized the referee. I encourage everyone to go back and Google those comments. Let's talk about a more recent fight. The Malik Scott fight against Derek Chisora. Right? You know, it's supposed to be a 10 cap. It's supposed to be a 10 cap. Now, don't get me wrong. I know fighters cut it too close. Malik Scott cuts it way too close. Right? Ideally, the fighter needs to start to get up at least at the count of eight. Right? You can't be their tempting fate late in the count. But did Malik Scott beat the count? Keep in mind, Malik Scott wins several rounds in that fight. Did he beat the count? What's the difference between when Malik Scott gets off the canvas and when Buster Douglas gets off the canvas against Mike Tyson? What's the difference? Think about it. That Tyson fight if the ref waves off Buster Douglas, Tyson keeps his belt. Tyson might even have woke himself up and said, man, I need to train harder. You know, man, I'm taking this belt for granted. We don't get to the part of the fight where Tyson gets his mouthpiece knocked out and gets dr drilled. We don't. Let me say this too. Let me talk about a more recent fight that's personal in nature to me. Right? For those of you who feel that it's sour grapes on my part, let me say absolutely. Manny Pacquiao's fighting Chris Algieri. I thought Pacquiao was going to win that fight by KO. He drops Algieri a few times. We get to, it's either the ninth or 10th rounds of that fight. Pacquiao drills Chris Algieri. Algieri goes down. He's on the canvas a long time. Right? He gets off the canvas at about the count of 10. He gets off the canvas. Right? Then he doesn't look directly at the referee. He's woozy. Right? He gets off the canvas, barely beats the count, then looks away. Right? Now, this is a split in the road opinion wise, but hey, here on this side, let's get uncomfortable. I understand there's a group of people who want to say, look, the ref thought, you know what? This guy should be able to continue the fight. And he did make it to the end of the fight. He did. Showed a lot of heart. He was able to survive. But understand the other point of view. The point of view I belong to. You're a gambler. You have a Pacquiao by KO bet. Right? According to the rules, really, the guy's supposed to beat the count and be able to convince the referee that he can continue the fight. If I get up at the count of 10 and I'm like this, and I'm woozy, and I'm looking away, and the ref's over here, right? And I'm like... Don't you want people like Teddy Atlas questioning whether the ref made the right decision to have that fight continue? Understand there's no middle ground at the casino. 
Either I'm laughing, high-fiving people, thinking about how I'm going to spend the money I'm about to collect at the end of a fight, or I'm shirtless, wearing a barrel, right? Looking at the casino, looking at all the, you know, gold and ornaments at the casino, realizing that I'm helping pay for all that because the casino's keeping my money, right? There's no middle ground. And understand, gamblers aren't fringe players in boxing because gamblers are financing the sport since these events are held at countless casinos, right? Since it's the gambling interest that helps fuel the public interest, right? And so all I can say is this. Yeah, this is a video with an agenda, but I applaud boxing commentators who include the referee's performance in their analysis. I applaud people who look at referees and who say, gee, you know, uh, this man's role in this event is huge. This referee has more authority than umpires in other sports. There's no chance at instant replay. The referee has discretion on whether to allow a fight to continue. Right? Let me just point out two other fights. I've mentioned them before. Carl Frotch, George Groves. Now, look, there's no doubt Carl Frotch wins the rematch. There's none whatsoever. But just think back to the first fight. George Groves is pitching a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. He gets stung by Carl Frotch. Is anyone surprised by that? We know Carl has punching power. Right? <laughs> That's not a secret, right? We, we saw what Carl did to Lucy and Butte and others. We know Carl has punching power. But George Groves doesn't even go down. Right? He never hits the canvas. He gets stung. He's winning the fight. Right? The referee, looking at the two guys, should know at least he's in the fight. This is a competitive fight. Up until that point, that's the biggest fight of George Groves' career. Understand the way boxing works. He doesn't have to be better than Carl Frotch. He just has to be better than Carl Frotch that night. Right? Up until that point, he was being better than Carl Frotch. You can imagine, there's some people, I'm sure, all over the world who might have even picked Groves by KO, right? They're holding a ticket that's worth gold, right? In fact, any bet on George Groves, the underdog, is worth gold. That referee stops the fight. Now, I know there's a group that'll say, well, you know what? Carl showed that he deserved to have the title. But just understand, had George Groves won that fight, right? Had the ref at least waited to see if Groves even gets knocked down in the round and had Groves recovered, right? If Groves recovers without being knocked down, that's not even a 10-8 round. It's a 10-9 round. If Groves goes on to win the title for the rest of his life, we'd be calling him either champion George Groves or former champion George Groves. Right? You see Mike Tyson walking down the street right now. You're going to think, oh, former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson hasn't had the belt for years. You see Lennox Lewis walking down the street. You're going to say, former heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis. Right? That ref that night made a quick decision before a fighter hit the canvas. Now, yes, it got George Groves an extra payday. Okay, fair enough. But understand, had they fought the rematch with Groves as champion, Groves would have no doubt gotten millions more dollars. Right? Millions. And so, to me, that's something that should be scrutinized. Right? I applaud Teddy Atlas for scrutinizing it. Let's hold these referees to a very high standard. Right? Let's not let's not allow refs 
to, you know, think that they're above criticism. If I were Teddy Atlas and some ref said, if you're going to criticize me, criticize me to my face, I wouldn't even take that person seriously. What's going to happen next? Teddy's going to be talking about some fight involving Vladimir Klitschko, then Vladimir Klitschko after the fight's going to say, I didn't like the criticism. Teddy, say that to my face. Right? Boxing's a public sport. If you're in the ring at a public event and you understand that millions of dollars are at stake, not just in the purse, but in terms of the betting, and that the referee has an inordinate amount of power, he should be scrutinized. Let me close by saying this. And I thought this was a great refereeing job, but just to understand the impact it had. Manny Pacquiao's fighting Juan Manuel Marquez. He has dropped Marquez twice in the round. He drops Marquez a third time. Marquez literally lies on the canvas. Both of his shoulders are on the canvas. Both. The referee is a great referee. It's Joe Cortez. Joe Cortez looks at Juan Manuel Marquez. Now understand, history is made on such moments. It's the first time these guys have fought. If Joe Cortez waves off the fight, what argument would anyone have? Right? Up until this point, Manny Pacquiao is just blowing out Juan Manuel Marquez. It's not even a contest. Marquez is down again and he looks bad right it's not a flash knockdown this is a lay down knockdown right he's laid out Joe Cortez looks at him and continues to count it's because of that moment those seconds it's because Joe Cortez continues with the count and one man well Marquez beats the count that we then have a great fight that night and three more legendary fights. The Manny Pacquiao, Juan Manuel Marquez series of fights comes down to Joe Cortez allowing that first fight to continue. Marquez would be a footnote on Manny Pacquiao's resume. Instead, he's a nemesis who, when you mention Pacquiao, you have to mention Marquez because those are an important series of fights. That's the power of the referee in boxing. But understand, even the great Joe Cortez, right, even A-list referees have off nights. Floyd Mayweather's last KO was against Victor Ortiz. Look at the replay. Victor's looking at the referee. Where else is Victor supposed to look? Right? Is that that bad a decision? Right? I'm in the ring. There's a break in the action. I'm looking at the referee. Right? I'm sure many people are saying, hey, isn't that the right thing to do? Joe Cortez is not looking at the fighters. He's looking outside the ring at someone. Right now, in boxing, they say protect yourself at all times. That's the rule. Floyd Mayweather takes a step forward, does a 1-2, drops Victor Ortiz. That's the end of that fight. Cortez had a bad night. Right? I'm sure Cortez realizes he should have been looking at the fighters. He should have regulated that situation a little bit better. If he's calling for the action to continue, he shouldn't be looking at the crowd at that moment. Right? We don't know what would have happened in that fight had Cortez managed that scene a little bit better. Pointing out that Cortez had an off night doesn't mean he's anything less than the Hall of Fame referee that he is. He's had great nights. But just like we criticize, let's say, of Vladimir Klitschko when he has an off night against Lehman Brewster. 
right? Just like we criticize guys, Carl Froch, for having an off night against George Groves, the first fight. Hey, it happens. We know it happens. Right? Just like you look at some guys, Danny Garcia, for having an off night when he fought Mauricio Herrera. Right? Richland Provotnikov for having an off night when he fought Chris Algieri. Why is it anathema to say, hey, Joe Cortez had an off night here? Right? If Joe Cortez wants to get upset with that, okay, fair enough. Right? Fair enough. But the idea that we can't talk about it is absurd. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. To Teddy Atlas, all I can say is, Teddy, keep bringing it. Keep holding everyone accountable. That's what this sport should be about. Thanks for stopping by.